Hello and welcome to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at surround sound mixing and how we can create a surround sound mix from within uh, Final Cut Pro 10 instead of sending it off to an audio mixer or an audio editor on a platform such as Pro Tools or Logic. So the first thing we're going to need to do is make sure our project is a surround sound project. One of the ways you can tell very quickly is if we look over here on the screen, you can see that there's actually five audio um, separate lines. Left surround, left, center, right, right surround. If we go back to our project window and right click on our project, we can uh, go to project properties. It's going to load our project properties up here in the uh, inspector window. Just click the eye if you can't see it. And then we can go down to this handle here. And if we click on modify the project settings, you can see it gives us a few options. And in the audio channels, you can see we've got the option between stereo and surround sound. So make sure that stereo is selected. If we uh, just leave it at 48 kilohertz, it's just a basic audio sample. And the render format we'll leave as Apple ProRes 422 for high quality rendering. Now if we click OK and then go back into our project, that's just going to assure that our project's now a surround sound project. And if I just play you a little bit, I just want you to keep your eyes on here, or you can even look at the levels here. Notice how all the different levels uh, from the different speakers are at different frequencies and that is because I have created a surround sound mix so we have different elements coming out of different speakers at different times which creates a really dynamic viewing experience. So let's take this dojo scene from my latest short film The Karate Kid Complex for example. We've got the sounds of the main people walking and punching in the foreground and then we've got sounds of additional people their karate moves in the background and that's what's generating this uh, left surround and right surround channel noise. Now I've actually compound clipped the, uh, the audio waveforms with the audio clips together. If we were to double click on this you can see that there's a few different soundtracks within our compound clip so if you don't know what a compound clip is make sure you check out my compound clip tutorial. If we play through here you can see this is the basic sounds without the dojo. And they're all at different levels because like I said, you've got different elements coming out of different places. But how do we tell Final Cut to play different sounds from different speakers? Now, it's actually very simple. When we click on a clip and go into the inspector, you can see we've got an audio uh, panel. Now, within this panel, we've got a few uh, key elements that you would have been familiar with. You've got the volume and pan for increasing the volume. We've got the equalization uh, for changing the dynamics. You can check out my custom equalization tutorial. And then we've got channel configuration. Now, the channel configuration and the pan are the most important things in creating a surround sound mix. So the way the audio was recorded is we have a left channel, a right channel, and then a mono channel of ambient noise. So, in our left channel, uh, we've made sure that we've set it to the left channel and then our right channel we've made sure it's set to the right channel just by clicking on here um, and that's because this was these two tracks were recorded from a stereo microphone and then we've got our mono track which is uh, also set to right now if we were to then go into the volume and pan and toggle down the surround panel panel, or sorry, the surround sound panel, you can see it gives us a very nice diagram of where the sound's going to come from. So you can see that I've positioned this sound to come out of the center speaker. Now the right channel, the reason it's configured to right is just um, a technical thing because of the way the uh, microphone recorded to mono, it recorded in an individual track, so I've rebalanced it. Um, but for the most part, if we just assume that this clip is mono, 
what we're going to do, in fact, actually, no, we're um, just assume this clip is mono, it has been positioned to come out of the center speaker. So, we've got left, left sound, right sound, center speaker. Now, generally speaking, a left speaker and a right speaker will come out of the center speaker as well. Um, because you can tell, you can see by here, that even though this third audio clip is told to come out of the center speaker, any color around these speakers means that there is sound going to come out of it to create the sound, to create the illusion that it's coming out of the center. You can see there's even some tiny, tiny sound coming out of these speakers. The, the more we uh, move it around, the uh, more, the, well, the louder the volume from each speaker. You can see there's one dot, one dot, lots of dots, lots of dots, and then three central dots, just determining the uh, volume of each of the speakers. But focus on the color and the size of these colored areas. And that's fine, but essentially all we've done so far is create a stereo mix. We've created sound from here, sound from here, and sound from here from these three audio channels. But now we want to add some surround sound from here, because we've got this additional mono recording that was actually recorded at a different time that's been layered on to give the feeling of that the room is even bigger than it actually is, and there's more going on in the room, and there's more people... Um, performing these moves. So if we go into the surround panel, uh, panel, which is just here in our volume and pan section, which you'll only be able to see as long as your uh, project is a surround sound project, obviously. And you can see that it has been set to the background which means that it's predominantly going to come out of the rear two speakers and that way the volume will, or the sound will come from behind the audience so they feel like they're immersed in the dojo and you can see how it's not just a technical tool but a uh, creative tool that is completely a part of the filmmaking process to create a viewing experience for the audience because what you're trying to do is submerge them into the film and not just make them an observer of the film. That's the problem if you have too many fancy shots in a, in a film because it distances the audience from the film. It makes them go, oh, what a lovely shot, and suddenly they're not in the film anymore. They're watching the film. Here with surround sound, it's one of the most effective tools to immerse an audience member in the film. So having the sound coming out from behind them will make them feel like they're in the dojo because the sound is coming at them from 360 degrees. There's no escape in this dojo. The only way to escape is to stop watching the film, but hopefully by this point, they're really enjoying the film. So they're in that dojo with, uh, with the characters. So if we go into the channel configuration, you can see that there's a few uh, defaults that you can select. So you could tell it what channel this sound is intended and then it would uh, just come out of that speaker but I would strongly recommend leaving mono sounds as mono and then using the panner um, because that way you get dynamics if you were to configure it to just come out of the left surround sound then what you're gonna find is it's literally just gonna be played out of the left surround sound because you're telling Final Cut that this is a pre-recorded pre-mix track that is only going to come out of the left speaker because that's what it's been designed to do, essentially. Um, so try and stick to this uh, this panel. Also, one other note is uh, make sure that you don't play around too much with the volumes. There's a tendency that surround sound noises are overly quiet. And that's because you think, oh, I've got my main noises here. I want some stuff coming out in the background, but I don't want it to override the normal noise. And normally, you would be absolutely correct. For instance, if a, if a person is speaking in the front speaker, uh, out of the front speaker here, then you don't want too much noise coming out of the left speaker, because otherwise you won't be able to hear what the main person's saying. But especially in this case, when there's no dialogue, 
And even when there is dialogue, don't be too afraid to increase the volume of your rear speakers because they're often slightly further away than the uh, than the front speakers, just depending on how the setup is. And also, you're trying to create ambience. The audience will be able to distinguish the dialogue from the background noise because it's coming from two different places. You've now got that dynamic as well as volume. They're two very different dynamics that are equally as important in creating a mix. So having the sound coming from a different speaker will make it easy to distinguish that sound from the dialogue. Less so when you've got dialogue coming out of the centre speaker and noise coming out of the left speaker or the right speaker, but when the noise is coming out of the rear speakers, well then, it's, it's going to be plenty uh, different enough. I mean, don't blast their ears off, but one of the other important things about sound mixing is to make sure that you export this on a DVD and play it on as many surround sound setups as possible if your editing system doesn't have surround sound. So if we go back to the main project, and uh, what we're going to do to optimize our audio editing experience, we're going to choose this clip appearance, which is just waveforms, and then we're going to decrease the clip height. That way we're just looking at audio. One thing I've also done is uh, choose to show the clip titles as roles so I can very quickly see what each track is. So I can see this track is a piece of music, this is an effect, effect, effects, effects, ambience, etc, etc. So ambience is obviously one of them things that you want to be in a neutral position for surround sound mixing. You can see this ambience is actually made up of, for the most part, the same ambience track over and over again, layered, so we get a longer ambience track, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and you can see that these are all set to mono. They don't have any complicated pan modes. But now that, because this whole track is mono and made up of mono tracks, we can go into the pan mode, and we can tell it to be ambient. And basically, that's going to create a default or a preset of where the noise should come from. And that's where it's going to come from. This is the prime position for ambience. Because when we're positioning and dragging this, we don't have to say this speaker, this speaker, this speaker, this speaker, or this speaker. We can actually say where we want the noise to feel like it's coming from in 3D space. Now, Adobe, uh, sorry, Dolby Digital are working on a new system called Dolby Atmos where you generally have a 3D graph because the speakers on the roof and ceiling and under the floor and all this, um, a 3D pinpoint position of where you want the sound to sound like it's coming from, which is obviously the next step up from this. But we can actually, for the most part, choose on a 2D map where we want the noise to sound like it's coming from. And by default, the uh, the ambient position is, is here, which means it's a bit from every speaker because it's ambience, right? Now... Whereas we've set this uh, default to here, we've used one of the presets. What we did with the Dojo C was create our own uh, mix to have some noise coming out of some speaker. Because we had more channels available to us, we, in our own way, chose which sounds we were going to prioritize which speakers. And then, in turn, had sound coming from all speakers. A bit like what we've done with here, but with lots more channels and a bit more complexity. Dialogue, be careful. Dialogue should really be coming from the centre speaker, the left speaker or the right speaker. If it's something like uh, someone calling from off screen, there's an urge to make it come from behind the audience, you can get away with that every now and then. But um, but sometimes it, it, it doesn't work. I, w I would strongly recommend that dialogue should come out of the front few speakers. You can use it from behind. But not if it's like a heroic piece of dialogue. And also, one final uh, point before you can start creating your own surround sound mixes is, so I've got this uh, sound of effect from my previous tutorial of a bell going off. If we just play this back. Yeah. 
you could hear there was a shift from here to here as uh, the noise changed because logistically if we went from this shot to this shot we would obviously hear a difference in sound if we were in them two different places because one shot we're close to the bell and one shot we don't know where the bell is it just sounds like it's in the background somewhere so what I would advise to do is not do this too much with dialogue And the reason I say this is because, especially if your character has some form of heroic speech, then um, you won't want his, his voice constantly shifting in pitch, tone, echo and effect from all the different camera shots that are going to be used to construct the sequence. You want the sound to sound like it's powerful and it's meant and it's purposeful. So it never shifts dynamics, no matter where the camera goes, it always feels the same volume, the same power. If you want to go against that desired effect, which generally isn't the case, then fine. But you'll often see in films, we cut from like a wide shot where we can just make out a couple of characters talking in like a park to a close up. And the sound is exactly the, the, uh, the volume and the dynamics of the dialogue are exactly the same for both shots. And that's because it's the most effective way to do dialogue. You want to change ambience because you want us to be there with the characters. But sometimes shots are used just to show us where the characters are in the... Uh, like wide shots will be used to show us where the characters are in the first place. So, for a wide shot, the ambience can slightly change. But the dialogue is going to remain at the same sort of volume from the centre three speakers. So that we feel like we're with the character still, even in a wide shot. If that makes sense. So, hopefully that, that makes sense. So, th this tutorial obviously was a bit rambly, um, a bit of an audio lecture. Um, hopefully it was useful though. Um, so, thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you very much for subscribing. If you're subscribed, and please subscribe if you aren't subscribed. If you want to check out this uh, short film, it will be available on my website on danallanfilms.com. And if you want to check out any of the tutorials I've mentioned today, there will be... Uh, some links on the video, hopefully, and in the description. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys soon.